Hey everyone, Louie here. Lately I've been doing some vibe coding for games and it's been a lot of fun. You can use a command line tool like Claude Code and just tell it what to build. But one part that kind of slows me down a bit is having to copy and paste errors and debugging information, as well as having to describe the canvas output back to the AI agent. So can we give Claude Code a set of eyes to let it actually see what the game looks like? Well, let's try it out. So here I have a simple JavaScript template, uh, a little game template, and I've opened Claude in that directory. So we can ask Claude, you know, I have a game running, describe the canvas output to me. And uh, Claude's doing some thinking here. The game shows a blue background with a yellow gold square positioned in the center of the screen. Inside the yellow square is the black text that appears to be the JavaScript logo. Great, that's, that's right. Um, but you might be thinking, well, Claude has access to the uh, game code, so it could just be doing an approximation of um, what it should be rendering. Well, I've got a gamepad here plugged in. Um, using this template, I can just move that logo off of the screen. Okay, what does it look like now? Now the screen shows only a solid blue background. The yellow square with the JS logo is no longer visible. All right. Um, let's move that back in to frame. And now, now the yellow square with the JS logo has returned, but it's positioned higher on the screen than it was originally. I didn't put it right back in the same spot. The square is still centered horizontally, but has moved up vertically from its previous center position. Great. So looking at this uh, Claude console here, you might guess what's going on. There's uh, obviously some SVG data in here. Well, large language models are great at text, uh, but they typically can't decode JPEG and PNG screenshots on their own. Well, not yet anyway. But when you're using the web interface for ChatGPT or Claude AI, you can attach a screenshot, um, but what happens is those screenshots are able to be passed over to a computer vision model, which can then um, you know, describe what it sees in that screenshot and pass that description as text back to the LLM but SVGs or scalable vector graphics are already text, right? They um, give you a, a scene's description with colors and shapes and locations like we're seeing here. Uh, in fact, if we wanna see exactly what's being passed from this screen here, got a little debug uh, view, and this is the SVG that is passed into Claude, so this is exactly what Claude's able to see. And it's an approximation. Remember, Canvas is just pixels, whether or not it's a 3D game canvas, like using 3JS or just 2D, like we are doing right here, um, we can take those pixels and um, have them represented as an SVG. So how exactly does this work? Well, um, I've written an open source tool I'm calling Vibe Eyes. Um, now Vibe Eyes is two components. One is a MCP server or model context protocol um, that plugs into the Claude, Claude code command line tool. Um, and then there's also a client side piece here or a little library that we add to our game. And that library is going to take uh, basically a screenshot or, or take an, um, the pixels from that canvas, send them over to the MCP server, which will then break that down into an SVG and optimize it so that we're not flooding Claude with too much information. Uh, this is actually really easy to set up. Let me show you how. Okay, Vibeyes is open source. I'll have links to everything in the description of the video. Well, we will clone the Vibeyes repository. All right, we can CD into that directory and let's do an NPM I to install all of Vibeyes' um, dependencies. Okay, let's do a Claude MCP add. This is going to register this MCP server with Claude code. And let's call it Vibe Eyes. And I'm gonna make this available to um, my user account so that any other projects can use Vibe Eyes. And the command we're gonna use here um, is node and then pointing to the mcp.js file. And we'll confirm that, enter to confirm. Now, um, earlier I was running a simple JavaScript uh, game template, we'll go into that directory again. And um, when we run that, we'll just run Claude. 
Claude will, will show us that there is an MCP server. And uh, the way we're gonna add the MCP client to our game is we can just do like an npm install vibe ice client um, in our game directory, or uh, we can include a script tag that has the vibe ice client, but then we create the vibe ice client and um, optionally we can add something like a um, document listener so that if we click somewhere in the document, it will pop up that um, display that showed us what the um, SVG looks like that's actually going to Claude. Okay, so um, I have the game here up and running. I have Claude running with that MCP server, so I should be able to tell it now. Me, what you see in the game's canvas. And there we go. So, uh, like I said, don't think it's just for simple games. You can use this with anything that will give us a, a canvas output. There's a lot of options that we can give to the client to say, you know, I want this specific canvas, things like that. So we can basically use this to do anything that we want to do visually in a canvas and have our Claude code vibe a little bit better. So we can just tell it what to build us and it can see what the output is, potentially go back and forth uh, with the output, iterate a little bit more easily, get any error messages that are coming up in the game, uh, things that are potentially unhandled errors, all of that can make its way back through the same channel uh, to Claude code. So let me know what you're building. Let me know if this is helpful to you at all. And uh, thanks for watching.